Uh, I would like to also welcome everyone. Um, we will have uh, an amazing panel uh, where we will talk about starting acts in the open RAN context. Uh, we have a few great speakers with us. Um, Andy Duncan, Open RAN RF and Digital Platform Development Manager at Vodafone. Mohamed Gill, who is uh, Vice President, Industry Solutions at Wind River. And John McCready, who is Director of Product Management, RAN and Private Mobility Solutions at Dell Technologies. Uh, so before we jump in and ask some questions to our great panel, uh, let me just tell you a few words about starting X. It is a fully integrated open source cloud platform that is fine tuned for edge and IoT use cases. The platform creates a fusion between uh, OpenStack and Kubernetes and many other open source components. And with that, it creates um, a platform that is capable of running uh, virtualized, containerized, and bare metal workloads and treating them all as first class citizens. Uh, the community, um, as you would kind of assume because of the edge focus um, has a high focus and emphasis on security and aspects around zero touch deployment management and operation and one of the uh, the flagship features of the platform is called the distributed cloud architecture which provides you with the possibility of a centralized management within the platform when it comes to the central sites and the edge sites however it also provides the possibility on the edge sides to run them in an autonomous way, which becomes really important and handy in case connection loss happens between the central side and, side and the edge. And well, let's face it, sometimes it happens, but then the system resynchronizes and uh, the workloads should not really feel any impact because of that connection loss. And when it comes to edge computing, I just you know, talked about connectivity, which is crucial. Without connectivity, we don't really have a true end-to-end -end edge architecture. Um, and to be able to provide that connectivity, the telecommunication industry has to be the pioneer um, in the edge computing space, which is what they are doing as we speak. And therefore, it's not really a surprise that Starling X as an edge platform is really popular in the telecom industry. And as an example to that, we have Vodafone with us today. So I'm really excited um, to start with Andy and ask a few questions because Vodafone is a leader in Open RAN. Um, they are having their rollout in the UK currently, which happens to be the first commercial Open RAN rollout in Europe, which is really, really exciting. And they are using Starling X as part of their infrastructure. So Andy, I'm turning to you. Um, what are your goals for Open RAN in the future? And what do you expect how it will um, affect your business? So we've been working on, on the Open RAN platforms now for oh, in excess of five years. It's been a, a remarkable journey, which I'm glad to say uh, a wide portion of the industry is, is following us on as well. Um, and it's really looking at how we move from from where we are today to drive a more open ecosystem in the provision of, of RAN networks, um, to drive more competition within the marketplace, introduce um, new vendors to, to that, to support us in our objectives of bringing the very best services to, to our customers. And as we move into to 5G and the deployment um, expands across our markets, you know, we see our customers are having much more specific requirements in terms of the services and applications that they're wanting to see running. So the flexibility of, of open source solutions, the community that we see developing those solutions and, and really helping us to, to drive innovation, which is critical to meet the demands of our customers, um, are all very much in line with, with, with our core objectives for, for Open RAN. So, you know, in summary, it's about broadening the ecosystem. It's about accelerating uh, research and development and then really using the community to, to drive innovation, to deliver the services to, to our customers. So the synergies there are, are really strong and we do see now increased support from, from many vendors and, and many of the, the industry open source communities to really 
focus on open RAM and deliver the, the, the type of products that, that we need. That sounds amazing. And kind of looking a bit into uh, how the community and the platform like Starting Acting can help you, um, I would like to just go and take a closer look at the technology side a little bit. So um, what are uh, some of the biggest technical challenges that you have faced uh, when it comes to Open RAN and, uh, and how does Starling X help you to overcome them? So it's, it's, you know, we're coming from a very, very high baseline. You know, the, the proprietary platforms that we deliver today to, to our customers, um, you know, are clearly world-class platforms delivering services at, at a very high, high standard. So, you know, we have to work across this, this new ecosystem, working with vendors really to bring the open round platform up to, to that level. Um, and, you know, back to the, the points earlier, really, it's about that flexibility it's about the, the, the desire to have that broader vendor community delivering and contributing to, to the overall solution. Um, and the key things that we're seeing today um, really is about driving scalability. You know, of the 20 plus networks that, that we run globally today, it's probably fair to say that no two networks is ever the same. You know, many of those networks have evolved over the last 20 years. They have various legacy transmission um, implementations, the, the infrastructure is often distributed. Um, and that's one of the critical things for us. We need a platform that fundamentally follows a standard blueprint so that we can replicate that effectively across many markets. But we want one that is both scalable and, and flexible. And, and that's where you know, it's helped us make the decisions um, to support our initial market deployments. And the UK is a very good example um, of where that's happening now as we speak. Um, you know, as, as we were saying about the, the, the customers, really, it's about now needing to be to be agile and efficient to meet the, the demands of our customers delivering those new services um, and ensuring that the platform that we deploy today can expand and evolve as our network requirements will do as we move from 5G technology, which we're only just starting to roll out today and then into the future 6G and beyond that. So we want a platform that is, is, is open, efficient, scalable, and, and agile. And at the moment, we think that we're seeing all of these attributes in, in, in this sort of open source um, community and enabling to meet the, the requirements that, that we have, um, which in itself probably leads us on to one of the bigger challenges is that we're used to taking solutions and products from single vendors in the past. Um, and what we're having to do now is generally we're, we're taking best in class solutions, but we have to integrate those back into one common and single platform. Um, technically, the, 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 the components are all working really very well, but as you bring different vendors together, matching our, our target blueprints for, for the first markets, and as we say, the UK being one of those, um, we're having to spend time now really working on the interoperability, the integration of the subcomponents, and ensuring that the platform that we deliver um, you know, at the end of the day is one that meets and hopefully exceeds our customers' expectations. So it's about getting it right at the moment and just ensuring that it, uh, it does exactly that. Amazing. Thank you for thank you for these great uh, insights. And I would like to just kind of follow up on that and and turn over to Muhammad and um, and kind of take the uh, I don't know vendor perspective a little bit as well. Um, so Muhammad, um, what are the benefits that that you are seeing um, that the driver customers are are getting from starting X? Thank you. So. Been in the operator shoes for a long time. I'll speak about a key benefit um, that an operator uh, SESP can get out of uh, Sterling X. Uh, the first one is the simple design and architecture. Uh, Wind River has been developing uh, real time operating systems and Linux operating systems for decades. So we bring that deep expertise into the picture and with that knowledge, when we contributed to the development of Starling X, we ensured uh, the design is simple, it is edge ready, it takes care of a variety of use cases, uh, needing low latency, high scalability and throughput. 
Uh, that's one big uh, benefit, simple architecture. And it is built in collaboration with leading chipset hardware and software uh, partners uh, from the ground up. Second thing we knew, cost optimization is top of the mind of the operators. Uh, our studio product, uh, which is again built off of um, Starling X project, is very low in footprint. For example, for Intel Ice Lake pro processor, out of 32 cores, we only take two cores, leaving other 30 to run BDU or other workloads. Uh, so very low footprint. Secondly, out of the same software, we support both uh, Kubernetes containers, and we also support uh, uh, the, uh, the open source uh, uh, stuff as well, the VMs. So the uh, operator doesn't have to use separate hardware for VMs and containers. It's being run off of the same platform. It is running in Verizon's network, hitting five nines reliability, uh, is commercial grid product. Um, another big one is uh, these are large scale uh, networks, uh, hundreds and thousands of nodes. So our platform offers that scalability and ease of deployment. We have uh, zero touch provisioning and automation capability to orchestrate the workload across hundreds of applications, thousands of nodes across nationwide. Um, another big one is ease of operation. Once the network is up and running, how e easy it is to, to run it. So we have single pane of glass operations. Um, we have uh, built in analytics that uses machine learning to proactively identify and fix issues. And the architecture being simple, it really leverages itself to easily uh, identify and fix issues. So we offer a lot of great capabilities and strengths that are near and dear to uh, the operators across the globe. When it comes to um, operators, before we move forward, uh, I wanted to also just quickly ask you to maybe tell a bit about the, uh, the user community around Starling X, uh, who's involved and what use cases they are, they are using Starling X for. Oh, great question. So. We're blessed uh, with a really diverse uh, community uh, for Starling X. From open source perspective, we have partners like Kubernetes, Dockers, um, OpenStack, and um, then from hardware perspective, we're working very closely with Intel, Dell, uh, and you know, Fujitsu. Uh, then we have a variety of uh, VRAN, open RAN uh, software providers, solution providers. In case of uh, Vodafone and Verizon, we're working with Samsung, we're working with uh, Mavenir, Casa, Airspan, you know, uh, others, the list goes on and on. So it's a very diverse and uh, vibrant community um, contributing both from the radio side of the house, the, the software and then or orchestration, the whole nine yards. And I, I would also like to mention another, another big one. We have been working very closely with Dell. We have a program where we uh, pre-certify the hardware uh, with Dell. We did that for the previous uh, hardware. Now we're working that program for XR11 as well. Amazing, uh, thank you. Uh, and. With the interest of time, I, on that note, I would like to turn over to John um, and, and just ask you to uh, please tell us a few words about how Dell is involved in, in Open Run, what, Open Run, what Dell is doing there. Sure, thank you. Um, you know, Dell's been involved in uh, digital transformation, cloudification, et cetera, in the enterprise for years. And now we see the telco network really is the next frontier. And you know, there's been great progress in the packet core and the voice core, and, and now RAN is, is uh, obviously a great opportunity for the industry to get a lot more efficient and you know, leverage all this great technology we've been talking about already. Um, so as Mohammed mentioned, you know, we've developed a number of hardware platforms that are specific to the requirements of not just to telco generically, but to the telco network and the RAN specifically. And we have a really active um, pipeline of products that are going to come to continue to move that forward. And, 
I think uh, Andy highlighted the fact there's no two telco networks the same. And so we have to have a lot of flexibility and a lot of diversity in the portfolio and able to be able to serve, uh, you know, everybody that uh, is there. And the other part that's really important is we intend to apply open RAN principles to uh, some offers in the private mobility side as well, uh, which is a great new opportunity for carriers to be able to use, you know, the uh, 5G technology as part of the business infrastructure, you know, manufacturing, healthcare, logistics, all these industries are seeing great opportunities to leverage 5G. And that's a place where Dell can really add value. That sounds great. And um, I think it also kind of points back to uh, collaboration um, as it came up a couple of times during our panel today. So on that note, I just also wanted to ask you uh, how you see that, what kind of partnerships are you building and what is, what is your view about these partnerships when it comes to Open RAN? Well, I think it's uh, critical because the, the key point of Open RAN is open. And so, uh, you know, Dell's working with partners at all layers of the stack, whether it's the RAN application itself, you know, the CU and DU software, whether that's for carriers or for, for enterprise opportunities. Of course, we're, uh, we're working closely with the large carriers themselves. We're really proud to be part of Vodafone's uh, initial selection for their open RAN opportunity and partnership with people like Wind River. Uh, and we announced we're, you know, we're developing a, a, a lab infrastructure, which we've branded as OTEL for Open Telecom uh, Laboratory. And in there, you know, we're bringing a lot of the players in the industry. Many have been mentioned, you know, people like Mavenir, et cetera. Uh, and really at all layers of the stack, you know, whether it's the operating system, VMs, Kubernetes, whether it's the uh, the application, whether it's automation, which is a huge part of uh, of making Open RAN successful, being able to drive you know, an automation solution so that carriers are able to, to run what effectively becomes a, a bit more of a complex network. So, you know, there, we're going to need all the innovation of all the players in the industry to really make this successful. And Dell's uh, happy to be acting in the middle of that. Thank you so much. And uh, with that, we unfortunately have to conclude our panel. This is all the time that we have for today. Uh, thank you, um, Andy, Mohammed, and, and John for this uh, amazing discussion and, and great insights into how the telecom industry and Open RAN is evolving. We heard 5.9, 6G, uh, and it's all about collaboration and community to, to make all these happen and deliver on these requirements. Um, so this is my call to action for you who's watching this panel to come and get involved and get in touch with the community.